I'm here with Scotty. You guys are gonna enjoy him. Please help welcome Steve Salzburg. Give it up for Steve. Yeah. Let's give it up for Seymour. All right. First of all, I got to tell you before I get started, they are doing some filming tonight. So anybody who's watching this after the fact on film, please remember the camera adds 10 or 40 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> also, I've got a big birthday coming up this year. I'm gonna be 60 in a couple of weeks. Oh. And, uh, thank you, thank you. You know, the, the world's very, very different place. When I was uh, a kid, I went to school in Newark. I'm Newark born and bred and went to the Newark school system. And back then, you know, it was before political correctness, Everybody made fun of everybody. We didn't care. We considered it a rite of passage. Today, they may call it bullying. Back then, we called it character building. <laughs> and it was funny, because back then, if you couldn't see, you were blind. If you couldn't hear, you were deaf. If you couldn't walk, you were crippled. I didn't realize that I was being an insensitive bastard for all those years by not calling them challenged or impaired. So I want to apologize. But we lived in a time when Archie Bunker was our political correctness compass. And I went to school with people of all races and all ethnic backgrounds. And we had a great time. But I will tell you that I learned that stereotypes are stereotypes because they're true. I mean, I, I will tell you, many Irish kids came to school drunk. <laughs> many of the Italian kids I went to school with had members of their family that were connected. No Polish kid ever made the National Honor Society. <laughs> I can promise you that a Jewish kid did not pick up the tab at the diner after school. <laughs> at graduation, many of the black kids didn't have their fathers in the audience. Oh. Well, uh, come on, it's a comedy club, folks. <laughs> and, and I will say that many of the Hispanic students had many of their children in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> but back then it was different. I mean, to make a team, you had to try out. If you sucked, you got cut. Only the winners got trophies. It's a different world now. Back then, kids got allowances because they had chores. Now kids don't have chores. They still get allowances. I'm the only guy on the block whose kids are out there shoveling snow with them. I look down the block, I see all these fathers five seconds away from a heart attack and juniors inside playing Xbox. We live in a crazy world. We really, really do. But I will tell you, we talked about snow, I'm going to talk about climate change. Can anyone argue that there is no climate change? I don't think so. I think it's apparent. And anyone here who is older, who ever watched the old shows, Bonanza, Lassie, Rifleman, there was always quicksand in those shows. Somebody was nipple deep in quicksand every show. As a matter of fact, the horses only had the lasso so that they could pull the poor bastard out of the quicksand. <laughs> When's the last time you saw quicksand on a show? No, you know, there's no more quicksand. Now there's sinkholes. There's sinkholes and they swallow up cars. That's what happens. I'll also tell you, it's true. Mars and Venus, women and men, they understand things differently, they see things differently. The other night, my wife and I are in bed watching the news. The anchorman comes on and says, tonight in Queens, a horrible discovery. A baby was found wrapped in a garbage bag in a dumpster. More on that in 30 seconds. My wife turns to me and says, oh my God, that's horrible. And I say to her, I know that's a terrible story. Can you imagine such a thing? He goes, she says, yeah, did you see the tie on that anchorman with that shirt? <laughs> I was in a totally different place. Now, I, I have to say, my wife is a fashion plate. So, you know, she does know these things and she notices them. But I also spend a lot of time thinking about sayings. You know, they talk about somebody who's up tight and very proper as having a stick up their ass. Wouldn't you think if somebody had a stick up their ass, they'd be screaming and squirming? <laughs> I mean, seriously, think about that. And they always talk about somebody who had an accident but escaped unscathed. Do you have any idea what that is supposed to be? Because I have never seen someone who scathed. <laughs> I also, I don't know about you, but I constantly hear about the disgruntled employee. Why do we never hear about gruntled employees? <laughs> and can I ask you something? If you're running late, why would you take time to shake a leg? Isn't that gonna make you later? <laughs> I also wonder, why is it that when a doctor performs a procedure where a tube is slid into your rectum, it's called a colonoscopy? 
But if an alien does it, it's called anal probing. <laughs> I mean, think about these things. And I also want to know, when somebody says, I'm going to beat the pants off you, are they talking about a contest or is it a new Fifty Shades of Grey terminology? <laughs> I don't know. I also think about inventions, technology. We have so many things. I think it would be truly amazing if scientists could invent for humans to have a dog's anus. <laughs> follow me here, follow me. There's, first of all, dogs go to the bathroom all the time, never need toilet paper. There's commercials out there about how our landfills are filled not only with toilet paper, but the little rolls inside toilet paper, there's a company that's making a product without the tube inside the toilet paper. If we had dog anus, we wouldn't need toilet paper. <laughs> I mean, seriously, the biggest dilemma would be finding a small piece of carpet occasionally to drag yourself across if you got you. <laughs> and you know, my father taught me a long time ago that God made everything for a reason. There's a purpose behind everything God makes. But I gotta ask you, what was he thinking when he came up with diarrhea and vomit? <laughs> I, I don't think they're very useful, they're very helpful, and I don't think anyone who suffers from that malady really thinks about it. And then, why do people take time to try to find funnier words for diarrhea? The shits, the Trotskys, the runs, the Hershey squirts. <laughs> Come on, folks, diarrhea is a funny word. And let's talk about vomit, or better yet, let's talk about projectile vomiting. Why is it the smaller the kid, the further it flies? <laughs> and have you ever noticed that in toddler vomit, there's always raisins? I don't know why. They throw up and there's raisins in there. And in regular vomit, no matter what you do, there's always hot dog. It's the strangest thing. You don't eat a hot dog for weeks, even for a month, and you throw up, and there's a piece of hot dog in there. And it's not just laying down, it's always sticking up at an angle. As a matter of fact, if you buy fake vomit, and you check the ingredients, hot dog is usually the first thing. But I will tell you something. Vomiting is worse than diarrhea. Because at least with diarrhea, you can sit and read. <laughs> That's my time. Thank you very much.